We have received a shipment from FPV Cycle. That means it's time for another build video. As usual, the first thing to do is assemble the frame. You'll notice it comes with two bottom plates. This one has notches cut in it so you can get to your stack screws when the whole thing's assembled. So we're going to be using this one and not this one. So we'll need the top plate, bottom plate. arms. Before we assemble the frame, I'm going to cut four pieces of heat shrink about an inch or so long. Blue is not really the best color for this, but that's what I had in the right size. And we're going to take these, slide them over the arms. Now we're going to need these screws, longest ones of this size. Now we can take the bottom plate, making sure the chamfer is on top. Put the screws down through, and then flip it upside down, put all the arms on top. Make sure you put all these notches the same way. So I just like to pick up all the arms the same way and then just turn the whole thing, stick them on. Make sure they're all nice and flush. Then you can take the top plate. Hold it on top. And then take an M2 hex driver. Get all the screws started. Just turn them enough that they're started. Otherwise, you won't be able to get them all in. All right. And now, we can take these skinny screws. And the four lock nuts. Put them up through these outer holes. Put the nuts on. And you're going to have to hold the nuts with the pliers or something because they're lock nuts. And tighten them up with a one and a half mil driver. Whoops. I forgot to show this on the Toothpick 3 build video. But don't forget to put this flathead screw in the middle here. The frame is done for now. Next thing to do is install the motors. I'm going to be using the shorter screws included with the motors. And I'm only going to use two per motor because it's going to be more than secure enough. And if you have some on hand, I would recommend putting a little bit of blue Loctite on those screws so that they don't vibrate loose. 
Do not use red Loctite though, or you'll never be able to get them out. Next thing is the flight controller. Rider plugs, we don't need them. First thing to do is solder the power wires to the XT60 connector. So I'm going to stick it in, and then mark how far back I want to strip it, and then just pinch it. Yank it off. And then just put gobs of solder on it. Mm. There we go. There's the positive side done. I'm going to slide the heat shrink over it. And that'll actually shrink a little bit just from the heat in the wire. Now I'm gonna, ouch. Strip this one. You can use a knife for this too. Just be careful not to cut into the wire at all. And then yank it off. There we go. And you can slide the black heat shrink over that one. Don't use matches for this. If you have it, use a heat gun. If you don't, use a lighter. But I don't have either at the moment. So I just use some matches. They they work too, but they make it a little dark. Alright, next is to determine the length of these wires. So if I'm going to get a battery. And the battery is going to go under here like this. Light controller goes like that. So this is around here like that. Don't plug it in because if these touch you'll have some nice sparks. It's around there like that. And I want them somewhere around that long. So I'm going to snip it off a little bit longer than that so I have some room to go through the board. And then strip the, just the end of the wire. There we go. And then twist that. I'm going to tin it.
Whoa, stay here. And then shove it up through the bottom. Solder it fast. I'm going to push down on the board so that the wire goes as much toward the back as possible instead of going straight down. And that way, when it's on here, it's hard to see, but it'll actually clear the back of the frame instead of hitting it. It still hits it a little bit, but it should be all right. Now I can cut the other one to length, right about there. And strip that one. All right, now we can stick the grommets in the board. Make sure that the thicker side is toward the bottom. You can just shove it through the slot, kind of twist it a little bit. So you want these slots to be going across. So flip it over like that, and then make sure the arrow is pointed front and the power leads come out the back. And then just slide it down over, like so. Now we can slide the motor wires through the heat shrinks. This would have been a lot easier to do before we put the motors on but I didn't think that far ahead. So I'll just do it now. So in the Toothpick 3 build, I brought the wires around underneath and soldered them to the bottom of the board. And I really like that because it keeps the wires out of the way. It looks really good. But with these big wires, it's going to be really hard to get in there underneath the board. So this time I'm going to come around. I'm just going to fold them over on top of the board and solder them on top so it makes it a little easier but you still have a little bit of extra wire there if you mess up. So I'm going to cut them all off. About... There. Now we can tin the wires and the pads. Well this wire anyway. I didn't cut and strip the rest of them. Try and hold the wire on the pad. It's not a very good solder joint, so I'm gonna redo that a little bit. That should work. I forgot to mention this while I was building it, but if you're using this VTX, you need to cut the screw off flush with the top of the grommet or your receiver will not fit. Next thing is the VTX.
in addition to what's provided with this VTX, we're also going to need three M2 nuts to secure it. And we're going to be using the wiring harness that the blue cable comes out and ends, not the one that it loops back around. So I'm going to set that one aside. And then I'm going to tin the third pad from the front. And that's the video into the flight controller and out from the camera. So I'm going to tin that and then get my tweezers. Solder this fast. Alright, now I'm going to take the black wire and solder it to the pad closest to the power lead. Make it about, eh, about that long. Just like that. in everything and solder that fast like that now we're going to take the red wire Solder that fast. And then we're going to take the white wire, or not the white wire, the yellow wire. Solder that to the next pad. Like so. Kind of go off about there. It's generally not a good idea to tin wires above the board because if you drip any solder you can ruin the flight controller. Alright, the white wire goes next. Before we install the VTX, we need to solder our wires to the board for our crossfire receiver, otherwise they'll be hidden by the VTX. So, get all this out. I'm going to tin these two pads towards the front here. I'm going to put a black wire at the very front. There we go. And a red wire can go next. There we go. Now I'm going to solder the white wire to the second pad after the motor wires. The yellow wire to the third pad.
There we go. Now we can get out our crossfire receiver. Whoa, there it went. Now with our receiver, with the antenna side up, the black wire is going to go on the square pad. And our receiver is going to go in like this. So we're going to make the wire about that long. All right, now we can stick the wire up through the hole. And solder it fast. There we go. Red wires next. Strip it, tin it, not over the board. Stick it through the hole and solder it fast. Just like that. Now the yellow wire is next. The white wire goes on the last one. Cut it a little longer than the receiver. Slide it over the antenna. Then we can plug it in. Slide the heat shrink over. And shrink it. We're ready to mount our VTX. So I'm gonna grab the three plastic nylon spacer things, put them on the front three um, stack screws, and then I'm gonna put the VTX on top of them. And might as well plug it in now. This is not really the best VTX for this build because When we put the standoffs on for the top plate, it's going to be impossible to get the SD card in and out without removing a standoff. So I would not recommend using the DVR version, but I mean it works. So now we can put our M2 nuts on top of the stack screws to make it all nice and secure. I would recommend using lock nuts for this, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to use standard nuts. Now we can take our crossfire receiver, tuck it in the back here, and then this is going to get zip tied to this arm, 
So, I'm gonna put a zip tie under the motor wires. Then I'm gonna grab another zip tie, put it diagonal across the other one. And then I'm gonna wrap them around the Immortal T. Like that, and like this. Once we tighten them down, that should be nice and secure, and it won't be going anywhere. There we go. That's pretty solid. So I can trim them zip ties off. And I'm going to put another one in here to keep the antenna from, or the, yeah, the antenna wire from coming up and getting in the props. So just like this. That doesn't have to be very tight. You could also run it through the heat shrink too if you want, but I want to be able to get to it without removing the heat shrink. Next thing to do is install the capacitors. We're using two in this build just to be safe. They're going to go there and there. We're going to electrical tape them to the arms. Just like that. Alright, it's very important that these wires be no longer than 20 millimeters, or they won't do a whole lot. So, these two are going to go over here, these are going to go on the other side, like that. So I'm going to cut this first one off. there. Alright, now I'm going to solder this one on. And uh, what happened? There it is. There we go. There we go. Now I can do the red ones. Like so. Now we have batteries charged. Since this camera doesn't have any mounting holes, I printed this thing so we can stick the camera in there like so. 
All right, if you look at these plates, the hole that is closest to the bottom goes toward the front of the drone. So I'm gonna take one of these screws that we used for the motors, and I'm gonna put it in the top hole. And this will vary depending what camera you use. You just wanna make sure that whatever camera angle you're at, the lens does not protrude past this carbon or else you could damage the camera in a crash. So I'm going to take that, screw it into the side of the camera mount. And I'm going to take one of these shorter screws, the shortest screws of this size that come with the frame. Put that in here. Then take a standoff, screw that on top so it's easier to get to. Because if you put the other plate on before you put these standoffs in, it makes the standoffs really hard to get in. Now we're going to do the back one. Same thing. Now I'm going to take this thing slip it in the slots here then take the other side put it on top now we can screw our camera mount on the rest of the way and put the screws in the other sides of the standoffs like that. Now we can take these three little plastic spacers that came with the VTX, slip them over the front three stack screws, then put the VTX on, take our three M2 nuts. These did not come with anything, I had to get these separately. There we go, now we can plug it in. And I want the camera wire to go under the crossfire receiver. like that there we go before we can put this on we have to do beta flight setup because if we put this on then we can't get to the usb port we're ready to do emu flight configuration on the drone if you don't have the emu flight configurator go to this link i'll put it in the description and then go down here download this one if you're on windows save it find it in your downloads Copy this file, go to local disk, program files, paste it in here, and then find the emuflightconfigurator.exe, double click that, and it's not happy because I already have it running, but double click that, and it'll bring up Emu Flight Configurator, and then plug your drone into the computer. And make sure the COM port changes. If it doesn't select the one that is not COM1, because COM1 never works, um, go to update firmware, find Maytech F411, and then I'm going to do the latest one. Turn on full chip erase, load firmware online, flash firmware. And if this doesn't work, you might have to run the Impulse RC driver fixer, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Now that it says it's successful, we can connect. Make sure you have movement. Now we can go to the ports tab. Turn off serial RX and UART1, turn it on on UART2, and then change 
this under peripherals to VTX IRC tramp under UART 1 save and reboot connect again go down to configuration change it to motor direction is reversed and make sure this is set to 180 degrees or if you're stuck in a tree and you're upside down you won't be able to arm um, change go here make sure this is set to serial based receiver and change it to crossfire if you're using a crossfire receiver and I like to turn on RX lost and RX set so that the ESCs will beep the motors either when it loses connection to the transmitter or when you press a switch to make them beep which we'll set up in, in a minute um, now go to receiver and just make sure all your inputs are correct and they all are so we can go to modes I'm going to add a range under arm over here um, going to add a range under beeper for auxiliary 2 Now we can save that and then go down to motors make sure you have a battery plugged in and you do not have propellers on tick this box that you understand the risk and then spin each motor up and make sure it spins the same way as the diagram and if it doesn't mark it down that it spins backwards and we'll fix that in a minute Somehow I managed to hook them all up that they all spin the correct direction. Now we can go to OSD and you can set this up however you want. Just make sure that you have warnings enabled, which it should be from default. And then I like to put in some battery voltage things. Um, milliamp drone. RSSI and a timer timer 2 is how long you've been armed timer 1 is how long it's been plugged in and then save that and we are done in emu flight so disconnect and close out of that now we're ready to set up the ESC through BL Holly Configurator. So if you don't have it already, go to Chrome. Look up BL Holly Configurator. Click on that. And then if you don't have it already, it'll say add to Chrome. So you can add it to Chrome and then launch it. Now you can plug your flight controller in and you're gonna have to have a battery on make sure you have the propellers off connect read setup so here's where you'll change it if your motors are spinning the wrong direction change the the motors that are going backward to reverse don't 
don't do anything with bi-directional. Now you can come over here and change temperature protection to 80, motor timing to medium high, and I like to take the beep strength up to there, somewhere around there. That's optional, but makes it a little bit louder. And turn beacon delay down to five minutes. Then you can go to flash all, 16.7 official flash. Now that's done flashing, we can disconnect, close that, then unplug the drone. All right, we're just about finished. We have a few things to put together yet. This back stack screw, I've had to cut a little bit shorter because I couldn't get the top on without hitting the receiver. Now that should fit in there nicely. Next thing to do is to get these last four standoffs, screw them on either corner where the, the arm screws come up through. You want to make them as tight as you can with your fingers. Now we need to plug the camera in and I made this lead a little bit shorter than I should have but if you stick it sideways here you can, it doesn't push back in so then you can plug the connector in and then stuff it up in there and this goes on top like that now we can get these four remaining long screws that are left oh, I'm trying to take them out the wrong end and these get screwed in the top here before we tighten these up just check to make sure you're not pinching anything with the top and that the carbon's not going to touch anything that it could short out or anything like that. This looks pretty good so I'm going to finish tightening it all down. Now we need to do something about this antenna and there are some 3D printed options but my printer doesn't like printing anything that small on TPU. So I'm going to take this top screw out of the standoff and I've cut this little piece of yogurt cup that I can stick the screw through. And then stick the antenna up through. And that should hold it quite nicely. May have made it a little bit too big, but that's okay. Now we just need to install a battery strap. Oh yeah, ignore the orange on this. That was from its former life. And this is a little bit tricky but you kind of stick it through and then take a tweezers or something get it started coming up through the slot and then you can pull it through And then stick it out the other side. There we go. All 
All right, there's not really a whole lot to say here. We're done with the build, ready to maiden it. So let's do it. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then hit the like button. If you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next one.